<laughs> Zenith, Zenith's here with us. Zenith, Tara. Hi, nice Dan. to meet you. Oh, nice to meet you too. Fucking <laughs> hurricane! Not yet. I was kind of worried. I was watching it over the weekend, and I'm like, I wonder if we're going on the air Monday, or if he's going to be like <laughs> trying not to blow away. Sick of this. Sh <laughs> We did this show last year and the yeah. year before. These reruns suck. Here's the thing. We're murdering the planet, so this is only going to worse. Yeah. A lot worse. Like this, and also, it's only the beginning of hurricane season. Yeah. Like, it's September 2nd. We're going to do this again. All right, what's going on right I just got to, I, I got to put this out there because I know people will be like, oh, climate change is a liar. Okay. Um, right now, as we're speaking, for close to 24 hours, Hurricane Dorian, which was a class five and has just now started grading down to a class four, has squatted in one place yeah. for 24 hours. Kind of like Harvey did in, in Texas. Yeah. The reason this is happening is because the water is like a few degrees warmer than yep. it used to be. If it wasn't, a slow moving storm like this would break apart. It would just, yeah. but because the water is slightly too warm, this one mile per hour crawling motherfucker um, is it holds together. Yeah. So yes, we're we're all gonna die. Pretty much. Um, we have it right now, barring anything. We have it. Uh, the forecast track has got us on the edge of it. We're looking at uh, tropical storm force winds. Doesn't. Look like anything particularly serious, though we're probably going to have uh, maybe power outages or garbage like that. I don't know. We'll have to see. Um, it just have to see how bad it is. It may keep turning, and we could have a repeat of yeah, last like, year. This time tomorrow, they could be like, "Hey, it's turning out to sea," and then we'll have closed down the city for nothing again. We were kind of hoping for a while. It was like beelining for. The tip of Florida, and we were like, "What if it just hits Mar-a-Lago and then takes a hard right?" <laughs> like, wouldn't that be ideal? What if it just blows Mar-a-Lago away, and, and then it's like, "I'm out." Finger of God just comes yeah. down, squash. All right, we're good. I'm out. I still find it funny though. This is my first time in Charleston, and this, everything's closed. Everything's closed. Well, yeah, because you're from Rhode Island. Yes, I'm from. Usually, uh, by the Brandon. time it gets up there, it's nothing. We we get nothing but snow. That's the only thing yeah. we get. I used to live in Connecticut, and usually, except for Sandy, usually by the time it gets up there, like, you have a day of shit rain. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, this stupid fucking... YouTube. Fucking fuck. All right, let's do the bit. Because... Because... I like the bit. Intro. Each week... Catherine. Radio Dead Air audience, go out in the world wide airway, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring back here for a little segment we like to call, what the fuck is wrong with you? And this week, of course, you know what we're starting with this week, Tara? Crazy. You know what the I'm fuck crazy. we're starting with this fucking week, Tara? Um, naked people? I'll just let you absorb what's, what, what the, uh, the, the very first story. Already? Already! Come on! <laughs> Boater in St. Thomas goes out on water during Hurricane Dorian, instantly regrets it. Even the no. headline isn't fucking around. It's like, nah, really? And there's the dude, look at him, out playing in his dinghy. He's not even in a real boat? He's not even in, it's an inflatable boat. <laughs> it's a dinghy. <laughs> Video shows the moment a boater headed out into the ocean during Hurricane, Hurricane Dorian it was nearly knocked into the rough water in St. Thomas. Instagram user uh, Pez Vela shared the video with Fox 35. He said he was on his own boat, which was docked at the American Yacht Harbor, uh, American Yacht Harbor in Red Hook, when he spotted the boater heading out in what to what appeared to be an inflatable lifeboat as strong winds and rain thrashed the area. He tried several times to make it wherever he was going. At one point, the man's boat is picked up by the wind and nearly flips over. Eventually, the boater turned around and got back to shore. Where were you going? What? This... He didn't even have power. Like, there's no motor in that kind of boat. No! <laughs> no, no, but you see... Yo, it's just... 
What? He, it's... I don't know. I, you know, I got nothing. I, why are the fuck... This wasn't even at a point in the storm where, you know, it was bad enough where you needed to, to do this kind of crap. No. Is this like Johnny? This Zunami? is not how you evacuate. Maybe he was a thrill seeker. I don't know, but that seems like a very bad idea. Why yeah. is the boys? You couldn't fucking pay me. What in God's name got into your goddamn head? In a little inflatable lifeboat. Wow. Was this a you, dare? You're lucky you're not dead. Because <laughs> there's a little, I don't know about all of you folks who live in landlocked areas, there's a little thing called a Riptide. Um, it's not just a video game or a Transformer. Um, it's something that... It's action show. Yeah. It's because of the, the cross currents under the water, especially at violent times, like when a storm is coming. They're going different fucking directions. Y'all get yanked the hell down, and you go away, and you don't come back. No. The sea takes your ass. You become Kraken food. Perhaps it was a protest of the Aquaman movie? <laughs> <laughs> God damn you, Momoa! <laughs> Get off the fucking the inflatable boat! This is just proof that natural selection is not actually true. <sighs> well, like Dark was wrong. <sighs> Next up from the Department of What Year Is It? Um, this seems fairly prehistoric. This is what I sent in today. Nashville school bans Harry Potter series, oh, citing no. risk of, quote, conjuring <laughs> evil spirits. Yeah. So, so does that mean the ban extends to the films as well, because it teaches you how to do it? Probably. <laughs> Catholic school in Nashville, Tennessee, has banned the Harry Potter series because a reverend at the school, not even a priest, a reverend? Claims oh, the book. Oh, oh okay. Because I was like, Catholic oh. doesn't have. I mean, Reverend is the title for a priest. Oh. Um, claims the books uh, include both good and evil magic. Wait, as well as spells, which, if read by a human, can conjure evil spirits. I need to read those books. Outside of the thing that stops Dementors, I don't think there's a spell that can conjure spirits. Yeah. Abracadabra. <laughs> That's not even one of them. <laughs> the fuck is just... Leviosa, not Leviosa. <laughs> flick and swish! Flick and swish, bitch! You're not flicking and swishing an upside-down cross in a pentagram. Like... <laughs> and the thing is, like, it's a Catholic school. My nephew goes to Catholic school, and he was Harry Potter for Halloween three fucking years in a row. And they didn't care. Reverend Rehill quoted as, These books present magic as both good and evil, which is not true, but in fact a clever deception. <laughs> Friend, I got some shit to tell you about magic, okay? Man, the Dom is <laughs> going to kill somebody. <laughs> I've, I've got a news flash on you about... Well, and here's the interesting thing. In Catholicism, any kind of mysticism is a sin. Like, you're not supposed to see a fortune teller. You're not supposed to get your tarot cards read. You're not supposed to read your horoscope, technically. All of that is considered an affront wait, to wait, God. So that means you were required to step on a crack and potentially break your mother's back? <laughs> Is that one of the, oh my god, can you, can, are you, are you required to walk under ladders? No, <laughs> not, not superstition, but like. <laughs> well, that, you could argue, that's magic. Any kind I of. I just now imagine Catholics that run into every room in the house, smashing mirrors like crazy. <laughs> I just have this image of a bunch of Catholics getting together and finding any reference of magic, like, do you believe in magic in a young girl's heart? And just saying, no, we can't have this. But yeah, like, any of that stuff, you're not supposed to do. You're <laughs> like, no fortune telling, no going to see the psychic, none of that. Listen, so for him to be like, there's good and mad, there's good magic. Not according to catechism, no, there fucking isn't. But 
you know, it's all right. Let, let's put aside the whole religion part of it. Let's just set that off the side. It's not real. Wait, what? It's no, not the not the religion. Harry Potter. It's <laughs> not real. The curses and spells used in the books are actual curses and spells, which when read by a human being, risk conjuring evil spirits into the presence of the person reading the text. They turned me into a newt. Like... <laughs> I got like, better. Like, you think Expecto Patronum is a thing? You think you can shrink people by shouting Reducto? <laughs> no, apparently you'll conjure evil spirits. <laughs> I don't know what they'll do exactly, but they'll just be like, hi, I'm an evil Actual spirit. Actual curses and spells. There nice enough. to meet you. He'll conjure Grindelwald. It'll, he'll appear. Like, this guy's running a school. I know, it's just, oh my god, nobody show him Star Wars or he'll lose his shit. <laughs> right? <laughs> They're not actual curses and spells. No, I'm sorry. Really, you cannot I mean, actually Avada Kedavra somebody. I've tried. <laughs> if we could, then there would be a lot less stupid people in the world. I have tried to cruciatus many customers. <laughs> it does not work. I worked retail enough to want to. Yeah, I've been typing cruciatus into Twitter all fucking week because I wrote a thing about the Joker and some people memed it and I have had angry dudes in my mentions for a week. <laughs> and believe me, if that shit worked, I would have a lot less dude yelling at me. We live in a society. Um, all right, next up. Speaking of angry dudes yelling at you, this was the stupidest <laughs> thing. This was the stupidest thing this fucking week. <laughs> All right. And this actually became like a viral thing. I don't understand. Popeyes has taken it upon themselves to leap into the chicken sandwich arena. There's which like was, chicken sandwich wars going on in this country right now. Yep. A bat they, are, they are going head to head with Chick-fil-A with making chicken sandwiches and but just the very idea i guess people who were so sick of they could i i like chick-fil-a but i also like gay people so the but maybe we're just so starved for it that po popeyes was like here you I go honestly, you know, popeyes didn't have a chicken sandwich because i've never been there they're not even that good chicken like it's it's uh. decent chicken but as someone who's had chick-fil-a more because they have a lot of them up in rhode island unfortunately like i like chick-fil-a more but i can't go there so yeah. It's it's a catch twenty two. I don't want either to win. KFC girl, they serve Pepsi. Bojangles is okay. You should do Bojangles. See and potato wedges. <clears throat> well, this 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 of course has come to its inevitable stupid head. Man files lawsuit against Popeyes. Let me give you the link. Yeah, I didn't get the link. Yeah, I need to do that. Man files lawsuit against Popeyes after locations run out of chicken sandwiches. Stop. <laughs> Hungry chicken fans around the country left Popeyes restaurants empty-handed this week when the chain sold out of its new sandwiches. One man is so angry about that, he's suing for $5,000. <laughs> Craig Barr of East Ridge, Tennessee, filed a summons accusing the restaurant of false advertising and deceptive business practices. He says he drove around to several locations, only be told at each of them there was no chicken sandwich available. Was this little Nicky? Like, <laughs> I, Popeyes isn't that good. Bar, uh, Bar claims he even. Oh God, what the fuck? Bar claims he even responded to a Craigslist ad, Craigslist ad posted by someone who said they worked at Popeyes and was selling the sandwiches for twenty four dollars. Bar says he paid the money but never got his sandwich. You paid $24 for a fucking fast food sandwich. On Craigslist! <laughs> Go to Red Robin. Yeah. <laughs> and what, what did they... How did this, like, go down? You got my money? <laughs> you got a chicken sandwich? <laughs> show me the money! Okay, let's... Can we do the exchange? No, show me the money! Okay, here's the money. Wait, where's my chicken sandwich? No! No! It can be that good. 
I, it is. <laughs> it is scientifically possible for it to be that fucking good. I am trying to think of the last time I was willing to drive around town to various outlets to uh, the same place to find something. I think it was. It's got to have been. Well, I all right. I know I've done that for computer parts, but that's like in an emergency. Um, right, that's not like a food thing. Yeah, the last time was maybe action figures when I was ten. I wanted to go to all this. I wanted to go to the KB. I wanted to go to the Toys R Us. Who's driving? What? Did, what do you do for a living, sir? That you were driving around all day. To all, do are do you YouTube? Is that how that? <laughs> like I'm 100 percent that white chick that was very excited that pumpkin spice is back earlier than ever. <laughs> I've had like four already. Tara, Tara, we were in the store stocking up for the hurricane. Pumpkin spice oatmeal. They did. They had it. It's really good. I've had it. It's what good. about pumpkin spice spam? Yeah, that's too far. I mean, I, I'm a basic bitch. I love pumpkin spice. Yes. But I, I got, I got <laughs> pumpkin spice madelines. So good. <laughs> but like, if I go in a Starbucks. And they're like, gosh, we're out of pumpkin spice. I go, okay, you know what? Just give me vanilla. What? <laughs> like, just give me a vanilla sweet cream cold brew, because I'm not going to die. If I go to McDonald's and they, and they don't have the McRib at this particular time, I ain't got my fucking lawyer on speed dial. No. I mean, I love, like, I, I love pumpkin spice enough to have uh, a body wash that's pumpkin spice themed, but I'm not going to go to Bath and Body Works and say, oh, you don't have this. I'm going to sue you. Now, obviously, what this idiot is trying to do is get a settlement to go away. That, that's, yeah. He's asking for such a low price from Popeyes that he's expecting them to give him, like, a thousand, two thousand bucks to shut him up and go away. Or, if, like, free food for a year. If I was Popeyes, if I was in charge of Popeyes, however, I would take this shit to court. Yeah, you need to fight this shit. Because you could, and to make this idiot look ridiculous, and to make him pay his lawyer fees... For this, I don't normally side with the corporations very much, but in this case, I will side with Popeyes because no, fuck you, buddy. People yell at me yeah. that us being out of like all my years in retail, that us being out of a product is false advertising, and I'm like, it's not. It just means everybody else got here first. Yeah, fuck this guy. It's like it's like the Szechuan sauce all over again. Oh Jesus Christ! Yeah. Fucking said fuck. There, there was a video of someone in a Popeyes who started throwing shit at the people behind the counter because they were out of the sandwich. Like, he was picking up trays and throwing them at the people. And I'm like, they don't make enough money to put up with your shit. You can make these at home, you know. The it's recipes are... On bread. It's not like it's KFC. There's not a secret recipe. It's bread right. and chicken. There's a little paprika. There's um the br pickle brine. And that's about it. You like fry are, the shit. And are they dry rubbing it in cocaine? <laughs> it's chicken. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna do that for the next time we're coming. All right, we got <laughs> we we got a, a, another one. This the, the, the gall of this next motherfucker. I almost have, okay. Have you ever heard a song? I know I've played it here before. Have you ever heard a song by Johnny Cash called "One Piece at a Time"? Yeah, there you go, Dan. Of course, Dan yes. has heard it. Yep. Tara has not. No, I love Johnny Cash. It's a wonderful song. He's like the gothest country artist, that's yes. why. <laughs> it's a wonderful song about a man who works in a car factory and over the course of a decade or two takes parts home to build his own car one piece at a time. Sticking it to the man. Yep. This is sort of that only backwards. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Wichita Falls man accused of avoiding Repo Man by selling pickups parts on Facebook. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> a Wichita Falls man behind his behind on his truck loan allegedly sold parts to a nearly twelve thousand dollar Ford pickup to keep it out of the hands of the Repo Man. Aaron Mark Johnson, twenty nine, is alleged to have sold to have wrecked the two thousand three F two fifty. That's worth twelve thousand dollars. That of two thousand three. Two thousand three. I'm driving a two thousand three. Wow. Uh, and then sold its parts on the original Wichita Falls Trading Post. Johnson was indicted on one felony count of hindering secured creditors for twenty five hundred dollars to less than thirty thousand, since the bank could not seize its collateral. 
Um, <laughs> they have ways of finding this. <laughs> it, it, the best part's at the bottom. Um, they they he, he a bank employee that he had an accident and Geico would not cover it. Uh, he asked the bank employee what he should do. She forwarded Johnson emails to the bank executive. He told uh, Johnson that Mike's towing was going to sell the pickup to cover the storage costs. Um, the executive asked how Johnson was going to handle the debt. The, the debt Johnson didn't reply. On March 13th, Johnson got the pickup out of impound without Fidelity Bank's authorization. He then reportedly began to part out the truck. Through the, among bank, among evidence, bank employees provided was an email from the repo man for Mike's towing service. Here's the cherry on top. The March 22 email showed that Johnson had stripped the trucks of parts and told the repo man, quote, good luck finding it. <laughs> That's not how that works. You still got to pay them. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, you know, if they take the truck back, you don't owe them quite as much because that's collateral. You still owe them. But and here's the dumb part. Mm -hmm. You could have paid them back with the money you made off the parts. Right. Yeah. Well, no, I don't. I don't. You know, it depends on how, how, how much you got for those parts. Yeah, I guess. But like. This was just a bad plan all around. Good luck finding it. Yeah. Good luck finding the money to pay for everything. They have. <laughs> That doesn't mean you get away with it. That doesn't mean they're like, oh, you got us. I left my car in one piece. <laughs> Good job, Noah. <laughs> I mean, th 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 <laughs> th this isn't like they've got your name. They know where you live. It's it's it, you're not. It's not like you still owe that money. Boy, try to tell Equifax that. No, no, I parted it out. I got him, though. Yeah. You're, oh, they'll be like, oh, we'll just clear that off your credit history. Good job. Yeah, you should see your faces. No. Good luck finding my credit card debt. I bared it. So he gets points for originality. <laughs> yeah. But that's about as far as it goes. Yeah. Uh, oh, boy. Here's some more bullshit. Um, okay, so we've had quite often on this uh, on this show and dealing with real life. And looking at what is that um Reddit forum you get those posts from the bad relationship bullshit. Relationship oh, dot text oh. or whatever's that. <laughs> My boyfriend keeps trying to murder me. Should I try and work it out? Like get out of that. Get out Meanwhile, of that. all the dudes are like, My girlfriend didn't shave her legs today. I should dump her, right? I don't shave my legs. I... Well, here's the oh god, this fucking idiot. <laughs> You're already seeing the headlines. So you already know this fucking here, Tara. Uh, this, this this fucking guy. Yeah, this guy. Man threw screws on Sherburne County Road to slow down ex girlfriend's new relationship. Fucking love this guy. Like literally. An Elk River man who was arrested after he admitted to throwing screws on a Sherburne County Road over the past two months. Wow. Did so to quote slow down. Someone he believed was in a relationship with his ex-girlfriend. Jeffrey Scott uh, Coyote, I think that's how you say his name. 63 was arrested after a caller reported seeing a vehicle near Zim Zimmerman Terrace Park that matched the description of vehicle police identified as being involved in numerous incidents. Complaint states, uh, Kuwait, uh told officers, he started pulling sheetrock, started putting sheetrock screws on roads near where he thought the person involved in a relationship with his ex-girlfriend lived, and on roads from the person's home to his ex-girlfriend's home. All right, let's pause here. <laughs> you do know that more than one person <laughs> drives on the road. There right, are like, other people that will get screwed by this. Themselves. You fucking idiot. In addition to more than one. Hundred reports authorities received regarding damage from the screws. Three big lake police cars were damaged, causing nearly seven hundred to fix them. Okay, you done pissed off the cops. Yeah, that's a bad plan. Not only do you have all of these people who could have a, they have a legal claim to you now. Yeah, over a hundred reports. You are buying so many tires. 
Here's another thing. If you cause an accident and somebody actually got hurt, then yeah. you would be in trouble for that, too. It's oh, like, yeah. the, the road that's... belongs to everyone. Yeah, that's manslaughter. Dragon disaster. So he screwed them over? According to the complaint, he bought 55 pounds of sheetrock screws, which would be more than 12,000 screws. Who does this? This This was your plan. This was your plan. Your ex-girlfriend moved on, found a new guy, and your genius fucking plan was to throw screws on the road in hopes he might drive over them. I would like to think that a 63-year-old human being, man or woman, but particularly man, would be able to contend... With the with the end of a relationship, you're 63. How have you not? How are you this you emotionally can't. crippled? There you are some holes in you this You didn't plan. even have the guts to just slash his tires, your fucking self. And, right. He had to be like, well, uh, they'll never find me. And and here's the other thing. He probably didn't even know who the new person was. Right. Like, what if she had moved and he didn't know it? He, she could not even be affected by it. It said where he thought he the guy lived. You don't even know. That could be her cousin. <sighs> Rowdy says, ladies, he's single. <laughs> <laughs> I can see why. <laughs> Just yeah, I don't know. A prize like that. He's not going to stay single for long. The idea that you get to 63 <laughs> and you contend with it. You contend with the end of a relationship with property damage. You know what? I could see it maybe at 16. Because you're a teenager and you're stupid as shit. You're an idiot, yeah. 63? Fuck you. Grow up. Christ. Just straight jail. Yeah, fuck you, jail. You're gonna just. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And just the look, the, the gormless look on his face. Yeah. He doesn't mm-hmm. even look perturbed. He's just yeah. like, oh, really? Yeah, okay. and? That, that's, yeah, and. That's right there. That's... What you gonna do about it? <clears throat> I got screws. And lock your ass up. <laughs> Finally, a night we have a very stupid thing that comes from Canada. What in God's name were you think? Okay, I understand can- Canadians are very friendly people, and they are. They're wonderful. They're. I love Canadians. I love visiting Canada. It's a great place. Very friendly people. There is a chance you can be too fucking friendly. <laughs> <laughs> Man, find two thousand dollars for feeding Timbits to bear. feeding a timbit and hot dogs to a bear has resulted in a two thousand dollar fine in british columbia (laughs) province's conservation officer service said the man was also ordered to keep a distance of at least 50 meters from bears he's got a restraining order (laughs) They put a bear restraint on. That's so sad. Was he trying to get the bear to drive his car? Like, what is... Uh, the man posted a photo on social media of himself feeding the Tim Hortons to the bear from a vehicle on the side of the Alaska Highway. So this I mean, is... Okay, well, this is close. Well, it's British Columbia. It's close to it. That seems unsafe. Hmm? That seems unsafe. A little bit. Bears are murder tanks. Okay, the reason you don't feed the fucking bears (laughs) is you do not want the murder tanks to think that thing, that funny pink thing on that's standing on its hind legs, that'll feed me. If you give a moose a muffin, it'll probably want some jam. If you give a bear a timbit, it's going to. (laughs) That's the title for this week. If you give a bear a timbit. I can't really judge because I currently have a bird feeder, a squirrel feeder. I leave out a dish of cat food for a raccoon that comes every night. Okay, but now we have a box turtle that's moved into our backyard that we're leaving lettuce and cut up radishes for. Okay, she but like us, we're very Karen, annoying. Karen to her. just really wants to be a Disney. Girl. But she'll she like eats the lettuce and radishes, but she doesn't like us. Okay, but Tara, the difference being. 
if the raccoon sees another human and doesn't get food from that other human, the raccoon is not going to eat the other human. The bear, on the other hand, it'll take your arm and it'll want more. Yeah. This is how, this is why bears go to populated areas because they associate humans with food because you fucking fed them. And that's how you get bears stealing food from cars and then starting to drive cars yeah. and taking over. And that's also how you get bears killed. Do you want because... bears? Because that's how you get bears. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> but that, that's how you get bears killed because bears going in bears who have a tendency to go into human populated areas, they have no choice but to put them down. Yeah. So Well, and that's like we were saying the other day, we're like, whenever we move and sell this house, like we're gonna have to leave a note for the new owners. <laughs> How about like, the raccoon. So here are your new pets. There's Tina Turtle. <laughs> <laughs> she lives out in the back. She's not super outgoing, but she likes lettuce and radishes. And she has these are her favorite burrowing spots. Please don't run over her with the lawnmower. You have Rocket Raccoon. He's going to come to the front step every night looking for a bowl of cat food. In that guy's eye, right? You have about 12 morbidly obese squirrels. <laughs> they just lay out in the backyard. Just wait. Yeah, just waiting for corn and peanuts. And you have a family of cardinals, a family of robins, and a family of blue jays, and the occasional Dothraki horde of blackbirds. Good luck. Again. Because this is again. what I've created, and I'm so proud, and I just can't wait to teach them how to tie bows in my hair and make me clothes. Welcome, welcome to Disney. <laughs> if your neighbors yeah. ever find out you're responsible for that shit, they're going to murder you. I originally started putting the cat food out because a lot of people in the neighborhood have outdoor cats. Yeah, but the birds, and man. We have a big, and we have a big front porch that they use for rain shelter, so I was putting the food out for them, and then this raccoon showed up, and he's really cute. But yeah, but you're it's it's the birds mostly because you're attracting a whole horde of little shit machines. We have a, my whole backyard is lined with trees, so the birds were going to be there anyway. Yeah. Like we already had three or four bird plant families. Um speaking we're of just cats, hello Grady. Hey Grady. You have a Grady calling us singing the song of his people. Oh, oh, I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you. Oh, I got him. Oh, I'm gonna get you. Uh, big boy. Grady is the Hi, Grady. I love him like, so much. Oh, God. Oh God. Boy. oh, God. You're not one of my Hello, humans. Oh, God. He was running I... from me all day, and then he decided, I'm gonna flop down. You can rub my belly, but I'm gonna run from you afterwards. And now he's doing it again. <laughs> he's like, I don't like you. You're, oh, you're God. not. I don't, I don't know you. Oh, my God. Oh, it's gonna kill me. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, God. Yep, yeah, there he goes. He's like, I don't know you. I'm sorry. That's Grady. my purse. I don't know you. <laughs> You're not my supervisor. <laughs> so, yes, the first thing we learned this week is don't feed the fucking bears. If See, you... I and I feel like Dan would have to remind me of that. Like, I'd be like, oh, look, a bear. He wants a picnic basket. And Dan would be like, no. <laughs> okay. If you give a if bear a tidbit, he's going he's to going eat to the rest. The rest. And then go no after more. you. Yeah, I mean, because you need to have bacon with Timbits, and if you don't have bacon, well, humans, are, they call it long pork, so. Yeah. Um, we have learned when you get to 63 and a relationship ends, <laughs> man, just let it go. Yeah. You don't have to, like, booby trap the, the roads and highways the of your fucking neighborhood. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Just make a bad country album, okay? Just right. Who buys 50 55 pounds of screws just for this? Just, just, post, just post mopey lyrics on Facebook like everybody else. I mean, just, just make like a YouTube playlist of sad songs and post yeah. it on Facebook and you're done, okay? Um, We've learned that just because you don't have the thing that you have a loan for doesn't mean you're not liable for that fucking loan. Yeah. Have you not seen Repo the Genetic Opera? They still come for that shit. It's not how that works. <laughs> That's that, that mm, mm. um we have learned that you you sue over a chicken sandwich and hopefully Popeyes is gonna step on you. And I hope they bring that nice lady from the commercials to tell you off, too. 
we have learned magic in Harry Potter books won't do shit. Even when you buy the wands from the wizarding world of Harry Potter, it right. doesn't mean you can do it in the really real world. Which I did. You, yeah, of course you did. <laughs> I have Ginny Weasley's wand, and I got chosen at Ollivander's to have a wand choose me, and I have that one too. I really like Bellatrix's wand. Hers is very nice. We, uh, I, I really want... Do you two mind? I'm trying to do a show here. I want all the kids at this school to just start yelling Harry Potter spells at this priest and watch him freak the fuck out. <laughs> Leviosa! Leviosa! Spelliarmus! <laughs> you know, that's probably what started it. Sick. The probably kids were the kids were yelling fucking Terry Potter spells at him. It's like, yeah. they're trying to kill me. <laughs> no, they just don't like you. Yeah. Because you're bad. Finally, we've learned... Stay out of the fucking hurricane! And these things don't run on water unless you have power. 